Okay. I think we'll make a start if that's okay with everybody. Um, so welcome to this afternoon session um, on SCART's maths homework um, and how we personalise our homework for our students. Um, we've just got a few housekeeping things to, to go through before we start. Um, this afternoon's session will be recorded, um, so please do feel free to turn off your webcams um, if you don't want to be seen as part of that recording. Um, it will be sent to each of you via email um, and will also be posted in our Facebook group. Um, we would also ask as well that throughout this, if you could turn your microphones to mute, um, just because some people's microphones are a little bit more sensitive than others and tend to really pick up that background noise. Um, so if you do have any questions, if you could use the little speech bubble um, chat icon in the top of the meeting screen, um, and then we'll address those questions as, as we go through. Um, that's great. Thank you very much, everybody, for doing that. Um, so we really hope that this is helpful for you today. As I've said, if you have any questions, do ask us throughout and we'll come to those um, as and when we need to. We'll also have a Q&A &A session at the end. So if you did want to wait until the end to ask any questions um, verbally, that's fine as well. Um, I'm now going to introduce you to my colleagues um, after just very, very briefly mentioning why I'm in my children's bedroom. Um, so as you know, we're working from home at the moment. And basically, I have three children and this is the only room in the house with a desk where I'm not disturbed. So the, the deal is that I get the, the bedroom and the bunk beds with the desk and they get the run of the rest of the house. Um, so hopefully that explains why I'm conducting a webinar from the bedroom. Um, my name is Lindsay Palmer. Um, I'm a, a schools relationship executive for Sparks, which means that I'm a representative um, for schools and, and liaise with them on a daily basis. So I have my own group of schools that, that I speak to and support. Um, we also have with us today Steve Brown, who is also part of the schools relationship team. Um, we're both ex-teachers ex and have, have worked for, in education for quite a long time. So we have experience um, within schools. Um, and we also have my colleague, Ian here today, um, who is a data scientist, and I believe he would like to introduce himself. So over to you, Ian. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Yep, so as Lindsay has uh, mentioned, my name is Ian. I'm a data scientist, and I'm in the uh, product team here at Sparks. So primarily my role for the past three, four years while I've been at Sparks has been um, looking at uh, the homework and how we make homework and how we personalize homework to uh, every student hence why i'm here today um so do feel free to ask questions as, as we go along and i'll do my best to be able to to answer them great thank you ian um so Today's webinar, we've decided to conduct in a kind of interview style based on some of the frequently asked questions that we get from teachers. Um, and as I've said, please do feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, let's make a start. Okay, Ian, so Sparks Homework, as we know, um, is personalised um, to each student. Why do we balance the homework to make it both achievable and challenging to students? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It's um, one of the primary um, drivers behind this at Sparks is that we want to make sure that every student experiences success with maths. Um, we want to make it achievable for them and uh, we want them to feel that real sense of pride when they complete their maths uh, homework. Um, our, our educational research team actually previously has done some work on this in the past and they show, they've show they shown that confidence um, in maths is strongly associated with attainment. So our, making our homework um, achievable and challenging uh, helps to build the confidence uh, in students so that they can uh, feel that success. Um, now success comes with uh, balancing those two sides so it must be achievable so it mustn't be, be be too difficult and we'll talk a bit about exactly how we don't make it too difficult uh, later on 
But it also mustn't be too easy. You can imagine setting a, a really easy math assignment, but students won't feel that sense of sense of kind of fulfillment when they um, when they complete their uh, homework uh, homework assignments. Um, so yeah, we we try to we try to balance those two, and also we we want to make sure that we recognise kind of the attitude of students. We want to make sure that we're recognising the effort that students put in, and not just their um, ability in maths. So we try to really make sure that every student um, is required to put in the same amount of effort um, in into them uh, into their homework uh, as their as their peers. So that teachers um, can really pick out those students who who put in the most effort, regardless of their ability, and kind of praise them and, and say that they've done a great job. Okay, great. Thank you, Ian. So, how do we personalise the actual difficulty of that homework for each student? Yeah. So we here at Sparks currently have over around thirty-eight thousand um questions so choosing the best kind of 20 25 questions um in a given week um you know takes quite a lot of um quite a lot of thought uh, so our content team yeah they've designed a uh, num uh, various different learning paths for each topic and um each contains a variety of different difficulties of questions on that topic so based on attempts that students have done uh, have made previously um, we can pick those appropriate learning paths to deliver to the student um, and to do this we have the help of um, a, statist a statistical model um, and that helps us build a picture of uh, the general ability of the student so we can pitch the content appropriately and throughout their time doing sparks we're constantly re-evaluating this and making sure that based on how they've done previously when we bring a topic back we're uh, making sure that we're still asking the right questions we're still asking the most appropriate questions to deliver to that student we might ask you know the same question again or maybe stretch them a little further than they have done previously based on based on how they've done great thank you um so obviously at Sparks, we recommend um, 60 minutes of homework per week. How do we make sure that the length of, of, of the homework is personalised to that student? Yeah, so it's it's a similar principle behind the uh, as behind the difficulty as well. So again, we have a, a different statistical model, which allows us to make predictions of how long a student is going to take on each particular question. So um, we, you know, have information about how long they've taken previously, and this builds a picture of their speed um, and how long they're going to take to do a homework. So as we're building that, um, as we're building that homework, uh, we kind of have get enough questions so that they get uh, sixty minutes. Now, this does sometimes mean that some students will receive more questions than others. But we feel like students will need to put in the same amount of effort. They need to dedicate themselves for 60 minutes of time um, to complete that homework. Um, and that's the sort of, that's how we make it fair across the board. Like you say, we um, suggest, we, our, our best practice is that um, students do 60 minutes of homework. Um, and we recommend that this is concentrated working time, free, free from distractions. So while, Completely, this definitely isn't always the case in reality. I know when I was a student, I frequently did my homework in front of the TV every now and again. Um, we we want to make sure that that is dedicated uh, working time, um, and we try and adjust for this as much as possible. So while uh, distractions are, as you can expect, common, uh, we try and adjust for this in in that statistical model, which helps us set that those sixty minutes of homework. Great, thank you. So how does this apply to students who are brand new to Sparks and we don't have that information for? So, yeah, as I mentioned previously, we um, are constantly re-evaluating our decision. So um, 
in the first week, we you're right to say that we didn't know anything about a student. But in the second week, we use all the information we've got so far, and that is primarily that first week's worth of material, to again evaluate how long we think a student's going to take and how difficult that homework is going to be. As you might expect, in the early days, in the first few weeks, that is subject to a bit of margin of error. Um, so we generally give uh, material on the easier side um, as um, it's important to, to build that routine of completing homework. Um, so we'd rather do this than give the more difficult side where students could potentially become uh, disenfranchised. They might lose confidence in their maths and, and, and break that routine. In that first week, um, we will try to use all the information we can get. So we allow teachers to input information about their class, their students. Um, and so we'll use that as our starting point to uh, deliver that homework. Um, and then as the weeks move on, we will tailor it more and more um, to, their, to their ability as we do that constant re-evaluation. Okay, great, thank you. So what is the homework made of? How is it structured? What kind of techniques do we use to compose our homework? So in the, in the homework product, each week a teacher can add specific topics in that they'd like the students to cover that week. Um, so we use these as, as an input and, and they form the, you know, the basis of, of that homework. Um, and generally, the majority of homework will, will be on those topics. When you do add those topics in, we'll, as I said, evaluate how, how difficult to ask those topics. Some topics, um, we might ask some of your students the harder material and some easy material um, to, to ensure that they're getting that achievable homework. Oh, but also, there's another part of homework which um, brings back material from previous weeks in a sort of a, a space of practice uh, way. So not only does it uh, work on material that you've put in that week, which typically uh, we see that teachers are also teaching in their lessons that week, but also it brings back some topics that we think that student hasn't seen for a while um, and ask those. And this is, you know, this uh, is quite a common uh, learning strategy um, and make sure that students are kind of up to date with, 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 uh, that, with that content. Uh, additionally, we also try to practice interleaving as well. So as well as bringing back questions you've seen previously, we'll try and do this in an interleaved manner. Um, and as, as this is quite important for uh, method, method selection. Um, so spacing and interleaving are two quite key principles that we uh, use to build the homework. And I think as, as, as always, we will we'll make sure that students have grasped the sort of the basics of each topic before moving them on to harder material and bringing in cross-curricular content. So when we do bring a topic back, if a student hasn't quite grasped the, uh, the core content uh, there, we might ask it again and make sure that they've really brushed up on that knowledge. Whereas if they have, we might then push them further. We might give them slightly more challenging material where we bring in those kind of cross cross curricular links from from other topics. OK, great. Thank you. Um, in terms of um, obviously, we've got the, the space repetition and the interleaving, like you said, um, that's in our homework all the time to, to help you, children to revisit topics and retain that learning. Um, as well as that, what other kinds of homework can they be doing in Sparks if they want to? Yeah, so like I say, we've got this, the compulsory homework, which has all of these, these strategies in. And we also practice these strategies in the uh, other kinds of homework, which we give as well. So we allow students um, to do a couple uh, of extra tasks uh, a week if they wish. Um, so we've got um a, a package which is an additional 30 minutes of work which they can work through if they wish um and that again brings in the spacing and interleaving that we uh talked about talked about before 
and is dedicated to be like I said, around around 30 minutes of work so if the student feels like they want to go above and beyond that week um, then the optional homework is there is there for them we also do a, a target homework package and this target homework package is slightly different to to the other two this target homework um, tries to bring back questions where we're sometimes slightly more unsure of that the student whether the student knows it or not and this is seen to be as a real challenge for the student um, so they may require help on these from yourselves as teachers or or their parents if their parents uh, are able to uh, help them uh, but we think that these questions are, are things which again are bringing in those cross-curricular links um, and uh, trying to help them to bridge those concepts uh, across across the curriculum. So hopefully we'll really deepen their understanding of topics. Great, thank you Ian. I think you mentioned there about parents being able to help as well. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning that um, parents do actually get a weekly email um, with a link to a video to um, that they can watch a very short video that enables them to support their child with one of their target questions in their homework so the idea is that they're there to kind of coach them not do the art not do the work for them but they do have that opportunity to engage with their child every week as well um, I think that's that we've pretty much covered everything that we wanted to get across is that right Ian yeah, I would say in addition to your point on the on the videos that actually every question we we give in homework, whether it's the compulsory part of it, the optional, or the target homework, has a support video associated with it. So mm -hmm. while the parents can go in and help the students with the target homework, actually one an additional way we make homework achievable is by allowing is by giving those support support videos so if a student is struggling with a particular question or concept then they can go into this video and get a a worked example um, of a similar question and that allows them to hopefully do kind of maybe a, a side by side uh, kind of use the example as a sort of a, a framework to help them answer the question yeah and that goes even further towards helping them foster that real sense of independence and achievement that you were talking about at the beginning so as they are actually working these things out for themselves um, and as we said that those videos are short and um, so they are designed as a, as a kind of prompt um, not to actually teach them the concept but to just help them get through it in in their own way to sort of develop that resilience really um, okay great so does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask us? You can either do that in the comments section um, or you can switch on your mic and do it that way. It's entirely up to you. Hello there, uh, I'm uh, <clears throat> um, Raj Moses here. Um, well, I've been using uh, Sparks uh, for some time uh, to to take my lessons, um, uh, online lessons. Um, I'm working with the uh, Microsoft team and then uh, setting tasks through Sparks for my students. And I've been very successful with that, so thank you for that. <clears throat> but now, my question is that, have you got, the first question is, have you got any statistical proof that you have tried before this and uh, you've been very successful in uh, achieving uh, uh, progress among the students uh, by, setting personalized homework that's my first question the second one is that um, uh, how much um, deeper you go in for the ability of the students you say that you know the sparks is going to uh, keep on working uh, to identify the ability or the speed of the student and so that you know the next week when they go and they will have a set of homework which will challenge or which will adjust according to the speed and the, the way they are working and how effective is that those are my two questions please thank you yeah so um so i'll tackle your first question first um so the proof that we've got so we conducted a um a randomized control trial about a year year and a half ago now um, on the effectiveness of Sparks homework. So this was done in collaboration with our educational research team. 
Um, and we found that for students doing um, doing Sparks homework on, on topics they made uh, over the course of a, uh, a six week period, they made an extra 65% worth of progress. So equivalent to about four weeks worth of, um, of teaching. So um, we perform such um, kind of such uh, a, a experiments um, regularly to keep assessing um, how well our, our homework is working. Um, and you can find a, a, a full report on, on that on our uh, website. So if you just go to the sparks.co.uk website, there's an evidence section um, and you can go into more detail um, as to uh, how we conducted that. But the headline figure was that um, it led to 65% more progress um, uh, against uh, no homework on a, uh, on a topic. Um, thanks, Steve. Uh, on your uh, second point, um, the effectiveness of the, of the personalization, um, I'll start with the length of uh, the length of time to start with. So, we, as you might expect uh, with statistical models, you you do see uh, uh, an amount of variation each week, which is why we say that actually, on average, your student will spend sixty minutes or however long you set on their homework. This can vary from week to week. It can be you know down at uh, you know. 50 minutes, kind of up to 70. We find that over a, a, a six week period that this kind of averages out to around about, around about 60 minutes. So while week on week it, it might vary, the average we find is, is, is reasonably good. And that's similar with the um, difficulty of the content as well. We find that slightly more stable. Um, so as we learn about the student, we can put them on the uh, correct learning path um, and um, you know they they're getting uh, there or thereabouts appropriate content but it's worth saying that you know that sometimes there are uh, subsets of students who we're focusing on and trying to we're always trying to make sure that we're giving the most appropriate material at, at the right time so we're constantly iterating on how well we're doing that personalization thank you Great. Any more questions? Okay, that's fine. Um, if you do have any more, um, you can get in touch with us. Let me just move you on to the next. So you can get in touch with us if you're um, one of our regular customers, um, then you can get in touch with us if you by the SRT team in the usual way so you can speak to your liaison in the school's relationship team. Um, Raj, would you mind um, muting your microphone, please? <laughs> You've got a bit of background noise there. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we've also uh, got the, the virtual at sparks.co.uk um, that you can contact us on there as well. If anybody would like to arrange a demo, um, then we can absolutely do that for you. So if you would like to see exactly what it is that we're talking about, we can do that. Or if you think it would be useful to have another webinar um, where we actually take you through a demonstration of Sparks homework, then that could be something that, that we could look at doing as well. Um, so please let us know either in the comments or by contacting us um, on one of the ways that I've already mentioned. Um, so thank you very much for joining us today. I think before we end, I'll just ask, just check again that there are no more questions. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and we hope that you have a good rest of the week. Um, and, and thank you again for, for using Sparks. Thanks, everyone.